Money Mayweather was robbed recently here in Las Vegas. He has a super mansion right down the road, and he was robbed. Was Jake Paul part of the reason he got robbed? Well, some people are saying kind of, but more importantly, what can you do to make sure this doesn't happen to you on a smaller scale? Because there's a few things that happened here that happened to a lot of people just on a smaller scale because you probably don't have as much money as Floyd. And it's a mistake that people always make and it causes them catastrophic problems. So today, we're going to get into Operation Home Security. All right, you're going to want to buckle up for this one because we're going to dive deep in some things that you need to do if you want to keep your privacy and security at the home front where it starts. Now, you might be thinking, Floyd Mayweather, isn't that that super rich boxer that walks around with, as you can see here, huge bodyguards at all times? Yeah, it is. Now, if you're not a massive boxing fan like myself, you may or may not know that he boxed Logan Paul recently in Miami, Florida, and so he was gone for several days from his house. Now, before this, just to give you a quick synopsis, there was a big altercation, a big beef, a big fight at a press conference because Jake Paul stole Floyd's hat. Floyd beefed up his security, and it caused a lot of added press and a lot of added eyeballs on the situation. Now, sidebar, Floyd Mayweather is shockingly rich. He's made a lot of money in his career, and for the price of one of his fancy multi-million dollar watches that he always brags about, he could have built a guard shack in front of his house with a rotating guard for like a decade or two decades for what one of those watches cost, right? And, and paid a decent salary. Like, you know, the fact that he had no security is crazy. People are saying, did he have cameras? Yeah, he had security cameras, but the big failure there was they wore masks, it sounds like. And so they don't know who it is, right? Because if you got security cameras, but somebody's wearing masks, who is it? I don't know. So what do we do? Well. You would think he has guards, but he didn't. Now, in this scenario, this is where social media comes to bite you. Floyd is a very braggadocious person. Now, just because he likes to brag doesn't mean he deserves to get robbed. It's annoying and awkward because he's in his mid-40s and he's a grandfather and he brags like he's 17, fits right in here on YouTube, but still, it's an issue. Now, unfortunately, you could connect the dots of the fact that where his family was because you could literally follow the Instagram trail. I did this with my team. You could look at his children. You could look at basically his entire crew and through their updates, you literally could earmark where his family was, which meant the house was empty. I mean, even a stranger would know the house is empty unless Floyd left some guards behind, which you would think. Apparently not so much. Now, the issue with this is was it an inside job or was it somebody breaking in? Well, originally there was a couple of different theories, but the first problem was Floyd documented everything he, he did. Step one, if you're going to go on vacation, you're going to go on to Hawaii, you're so excited, you, you've got incredible pictures, you've been working out, you want to show off what you're doing, your fancy va cool, go buck nuts on your social media. Do it the day you get back. You know, if you go on a vacation the 7th through the 10th, the following weekend or the, the 11th through the 14th, post your pictures like you're gone as soon as you get back. Rule number one of complete incompetence, don't ever post where you actually are. A lot of people think, well, who cares? Like, I'm not, it's not like I'm, you know, Brad Pitt. Nobody cares where I am. Well, if they know where you live, they can break into your house. And a huge percentage, roughly 70% of these crimes are inside jobs. By inside jobs, somebody you know. Typically, either as a friend, a family member, or an acquaintance. Crazy, I know, but it happens all the time. It literally happens all the time. And home invasion is massive. And if you're documenting the fact that you're gone, and it's so easy. I mean, I, you could type up most of your neighbors and find their social media and then if you see your neighbor talking about they're going to California next week and you know that four people live in that house and you check their social media and they're in California and you live in Georgia or New Hampshire, well then you know the house is empty and you know for how long, right? Crazy, literally crazy. So 
This is what you got to watch. Do not post things on social media. Now, in Floyd's case, that wasn't an option. He's a world famous boxer in a massive pay-per-view boxing event. Tracking his family, that's a different thing. But if you're somebody who's targeted, like a lot of my clients, people who are targeted or people who are, have stalkers, people who deal with identity theft, people who deal with creditors, people who deal with har people trying to harass them, people trying to follow them, people trying to blackmail them, people trying to extort them. There's different sets of steps you need to take and you need to understand that while you think nobody cares about you and you're never gonna be a victim, statistically you have a better shot than you probably think and that's a problem and something a lot of people deal with. So, rule number one is pretty simple. What's rule number two? Rule number two, beyond posting everything once you get back, because it's okay to share if you want to, but be very strategic. Again, it goes out saying, wipe the metadata from your pictures, especially if you take pictures in a personal space, house, office, a place you constantly are, wipe the metadata. I have an app that automatically wipes everything, uh, keeps different things clean. But, I mean, simplistic things that people really should, should keep in mind. The next thing for Floyd is, you know, having guards is key. Having a structure of how you keep your valuables. So Floyd is going to have a lot more valuables than the average person. Floyd's going to have a lot more valuables than almost anybody. I mean, his car collection is worth more than like six mansions. Most people don't even have one quarter of one. So, you know, it's a different scenario, but I'm using him as a, as a high profile target. Now, what happens in these scenarios when you have these altercations is it put a lot of eyeballs on Floyd and Jake was tweeting and saying a lot of things kind of digging at him and so he was creating this beef. This is why I talk a lot about compartmentalizing and not having the whole world know where you live. Now there's a lot of celebrities where no one knows where they live and then there's a lot of braggadocious celebrities like Floyd where everyone knows where they live. So keeping your residence, keeping where you sleep private except for to your very, very core circle. And don't have your name available, either wise in trusts or LLCs. Don't have your core information just readily available. So somebody could just run the address and it goes into your name. Not good, not good at all. Because then literally your neighbors could run your information into a database. Every number, every telephone number, there's a database. Every home, house number, street address, there's a million databases. Every license plate, there's a whole bunch of databases, and these are all publicly available. Some of them for a small fee, some of them free. Crazy, I know. We talk more about this at privacyxproject.com, so you can always check it out there. But this is something that everyone needs to keep in mind when it comes to your being able to lock down where you are. So because so many people know where Floyd lives, because he brags, the, the irony is he's got so much money, he could build a shield, not let anybody know where he lives. He could put all of his assets in a land trust, maybe have like a party house, you know, here in Vegas, and then like a private residence that's more tucked away. No, no, he just, you know, it's just stupid. It's literally stupid. Again, is it his fault he got robbed? No. Is it Jake Paul's fault? No. But their back and forth drew a lot of eyeballs, and they were talking about, and I'm not even going to put on my video some of the stuff they were talking about. You could check their Twitters because they were literally talking about some personal information. And so when people start leaking personal information about each other, this is a problem. We've seen this like with, with other YouTubers. Those brothers, uh, Deji and KSI, those, those YouTube brothers, were literally leaking like bank information and personal conversations. Like we've seen people's private stuff aired out on YouTube and other social platforms. So this is why you keep stuff locked in. These guys are brothers, right? So you always say, well, should I? No, dude. I mean, I, I hate to be that guy that says trust no one, but I mean, keep your circle tight. Jake Paul, obviously a guy like that who likes to, to take shots and, and blab about a lot of things, not good. And I, I recently did a video I recommend you check out where I go more in depth on the things you could do, talking about how Roman Atwood got doxxed and had to deal with the FBI for a year and leave YouTube, talking about some stuff that happened with David Dobrik and Corinna, talking about stuff that happened with you know a whole bunch of different people because the reality, I mean, the Jeff Wittick thing where he got blackmailed, the reality of the situation is it's getting really bad because these databases and people can literally track you almost in real time. The next thing is Floyd's phone number. So apparently Jake was texting Floyd. 
So somebody, now, if somebody has your real phone number, the amount of data you could get is crazy. Now, can you pretext a phone company and get somebody's triangulation data? No, in my opinion, you cannot. Now, if, if the phone company gives that to you without a warrant, they committed a crime. So let's say you've got a relative who works for a phone company and does this for you. You both could go to jail. So you basically have to know somebody or you yourself has to be willing to commit a crime. So with that being the case, can it happen? Yes. Is it likely? No. So the average person will not have access to triangulation or GPS data directly from a phone company, not even law enforcement, unless they get a warrant most of the time because of a few telecommunications acts make it so that information is not readily available, even to law enforcement. Now there's, <laughs> there's MZ catcher. There's a lot of other, so law enforcement has sidestepped it. So this, this video could break up into 40 different sections. So I'm trying to stay as focused as I can. I've done a lot of videos on these sub niches that I'm talking about, but you look at like MZ catchers, IMIE, you look at uh, some of the GPS cards in the modern phones, the tracking is incredible, but you don't even need any of that. You get someone's phone number, you get where it's registered. And then a lot of times, depending upon, you know, you would think Floyd is smart enough to have all of his stuff registered to his company, maybe a PO box somewhere, or maybe a small office. Like a lot of celebrities will have an office. Floyd has the Mayweather gym right down the road. At least have it go to the gym because that's public, right? Not to his house. Well, a lot of documents were released and Floyd has a lot of his incorporation stuff at his house. Now, if you ever listen to my podcast, I talked about how I was able to track down this girl for a friend that actually ended in marriage. It's a really fascinating podcast ish uh, episode and I've been getting countless comments on it because of how deep I go. It is a crazy whirlwind of stories. In fact, uh, you go to the privacyxpodcast.com, check it out really cool episode. It's probably my favorite episodes I ever did because I break down exactly how to track somebody down step by step. I'll link it down below the first episode so you can check it out if you're interested because if there was anyone, any piece of content I recommend you check out on this topic, it would be that because I go in, it's like an hour long podcast and I break down. It's like you're coming with me, how I found this girl. It's not as creepy as it sounds. Don't worry. It, 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 it ended well. And I talk about the stipulations, but it's also scary what's possible. And that's one thing you need to keep in mind. So anyway, I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to break down a little bit of this because I begin a lot of questions. What could you do? Again, a couple simple things. Like I mentioned, compartmentalizing your information, compartmentalizing your data, not giving out your real phone number to everyone, making sure that your core information is private, making sure your core residence is not just out there willy nilly like Floyd did. And then having these public beefs that release a lot of information cause a lot of problems because it puts a lot of eyeballs on your house and where you live. And then you can geotag and track your family to Miami and not just to Miami, but like there's people in his family, like I'm at this hotel, I'm at that hotel. We're currently doing this and you could just count one, two. Okay. His kids. Okay. Their spouses. Okay. Floyd. Okay. Floyd's team. It's just crazy guys. Now you think, well, that's pretty stalkerish. That's what people do. That's what I'm trying to explain here on privacy X. So anyway, if you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, Put out new videos all the time. Privacy is right and it's right that needs to be protected. Take action every single day. Check out the podcast. Go all in and I'll see you guys in the next video.